All right, good afternoon. It is 4.30 on April 1st. I'd like to uh, begin this meeting by uh, standing for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, I'd like to have roll call now, please. We also have uh, dialed in Sam Quaker. Can you hear us, Sam? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think we have uh, several others dialed in. We have Jared Johnson. Are you dialed in or Kiana? I'm here. This is Kiana. Okay, is Jared dialed in? Hi, yes, this is Jared. Hi, Jared. Um, I also have a number ending in 3890. Who's dialed in 3890? I don't know if that's me, but this is Frank with the young guy in. Hi, Frank. I think we have Kerwin Stiller on. Then I have a 3015. Phone number ending in 3015. Sam, that could be Micah. That's me. Oh, hey, uh, Micah. Hi, the 3015, um, that is, that's me, Kiana. Oh, hey, Kiana. Hi. All right. I guess I don't know my number, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that would be right, everybody then. Here, everybody, Mayor. Everyone's here and accounted for, one way or another. All right, uh, moving on then uh, to the approval of the agenda. I'll take a motion for that. So moved. Support. Are there any comments? Support. We have a support with Barjona. If there are no any comments or questions, roll call, please. Eggers? Aye. Brewster? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. The agenda stands approved. Then moving on to our public forum. I uh, confirmed with Angie earlier there are no written comments from anyone. That I'm aware of, Sam. Do you have any? Uh, no, sir. Okay, and I don't know of any verbal at this point. We have no one in the in the audience today, so I'm going to assume there yeah, are no. Mr. Mayor. Yes. We have everybody unmuted right now, so if anybody wants to to speak, they could do so now. Hearing nothing, let's move on then to uh, approval of the consent agenda. A motion for we'll that. I'll take the please. motion to approve. Support. Support. I'll take the motion from Hint and a support from Barahona. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Campbell? Aye. Hint? Aye. Eggers? Aye. 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 All right, that takes care of that. Now working with our new agenda presentation here, the next item that I have up would be the setting of the public hearing for April 15. Is that correct? Sam, help me out here. That was consent. That is consent. Okay. So you don't have to read all of it. You did that for me. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, then nothing under old business. Then uh, I would looks to me like we're up to the new business, uh, an annual report from Kiana Johnson. Is that correct? Am I in the right? Okay, Kiana, we are ready for you then. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for letting me join in tonight. Um, I start off by uh, 
kind of giving you a little background. I do my annual report every year and present it to the O'Brien County Board of Supervisors. Then after that, um, so I presented to them, I believe it was the end of January, and then I just visit the communities after that to give my annual report and update. But anytime outside of that, you know, please feel free to contact me or anyone else on the board. I think Sam emailed out on the attachments the report I submitted. So I'll just kind of go over that. Again, if you have uh, questions, just interrupt. Um, or stop me. That sounded rude. Sorry. Interrupt. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. I yeah. don't want to yell. Okay. So um, currently our board members, how we're, we're formed, we have a representative from each of the eight communities. So the Sheldon representative is Kurt Strauss. And then we also have an O'Brien County Board of Supervisor representative, and that rotates off every year uh, according to the district. So currently our supervisor representative is Dennis Vandenhall. Um, our target objectives, we did a strategic planning session in 2018, and our uh, target objectives are one, BRE course uh, expanding and retaining our existing existing business and inventory, uh, excuse me, industries, cultivating entrepreneurship, and of course, promoting our RLF. Our RLF is one of the greatest tools, biggest tools we have in our, our toolkit, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, and, and actually right now, uh, working with our business and industry is really important, important reaching out to all the businesses during this time and just uh, following up with them to see what resources they need and what assistance we can provide to them at this time has been really crucial. Workforce, uh, of, like everyone else, workforce housing is also very important. So, you know, working through our uh, BRE visits, you know, we're, we're trying to create analysis of what the needs are in O'Brien County. Um, also with that, uh, career day has been really important. Uh, we started that in partnership with Sheldon, which has been great. Uh, we were supposed to have our fourth annual career day this month. We unfortunately had to cancel that for this year, but that's been a great way we could bring the high school students into the place of the business and expose them to what career opportunities are in O'Brien County. Um, wonderful when we hear the feedback from the students. Say, uh, we've had them comment that the place of business is not what they thought it was. I had one young man who said he drove by Mill Creek Machining and Pauline, Paulina every day for years on his way to school and he never realized what went on there. Um, to hear the students be exposed uh, to these places of business and realize the technology that's involved and the clean work environment, you know, that's what we want to do is try and expose those students to those places of business so that uh, they decide to stay here and work here. In addition to that, we also partnered with uh, a Sheldon Chamber in Development with Kurt on the Hometown Scholarship. Uh, that was wonderful. We were able to do that last year. Uh, we are going to extend that same opportunity to the rest of the communities in O'Brien County. I think that's a wonderful thing they're doing to try and, and recruit the people back home. Also with the housing, you know, we're, we're supporting the existing programs with workforce housing tax credits and the Empower Rural Iowa grant programs that are available. I have been appointed to the Empower Rural Iowa board on the housing committee, so uh, if you have any questions on that, I'll certainly try and help you. On to the Revolving Loan Fund Committee. We do have um, representation from the lenders throughout O'Brien County, and the Sheldon rep is Dan Mattis. Um, this committee has done an awesome job of trying to, to get money out to the businesses uh, at one point, two years ago, I believe, the USDA has said we had the largest fund in the state of Iowa. We have, to date, as of 2019, approved 54 loans, and those loans totaled a little over $4,592,000. Uh, we only closed on $3,983,896. And what happens on those situations, we do have loans that are approved, but due to other circumstances, such as uh, maybe they have changed ownership or they have found other financing resources through their lender and didn't need our funds, and that's great. You know, we're always here to help the businesses, but if they can 
find uh, funds elsewhere. We support that. We are gap financing, so we only do one third of the total project cost. Uh, we do not exceed two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then we also work in conjunction with Sheldon's revolving loan fund. So, um, which is a great benefit if they can get funds from Sheldon, and then also get two hundred fifty thousand from us, and we can keep those interest payments, loan payments down for them. Then that's a win for everybody. So. We've had really uh, great success uh, partnering with Sheldon on those funds as well. We always like to talk about the capital investment these businesses make into O'Brien County, and those total a little over $28 million. We also track the jobs created and the jobs retained. So we have created 244 and retained 188. We do have to report uh, to the USDA uh, those statistics, so we do try and keep them always current. And then we are audited. So Williams and Company uh, did our audit in 2019. About 15 years ago, our organization had a little over $50,000 that they were lending out. Uh, we had a great need uh, to, to fund that program. So uh, by working with the USDA, until in 2006, we received 500000 and. 2014 received another 500,000. Um, those funds uh, came to us through actually Storm Lake uh, Revolving Loan Fund. They had a pool of money they weren't using. Uh, we were needing funds, so the USDA offered them the opportunity to return the funds to Washington or to give them to us here. And Storm Lake uh, saw the need to keep the money in Northwest Iowa, and we really appreciate that. So we were able to get their funds, and before we even closed on the loan, we actually had loans approved exceeding the $500,000. Definitely a need for us here in O'Brien County. In addition to that, we did receive grant dollars from the USDA for $196,910. We uh, were the only application the state of Iowa put forward to compete, and nationwide we scored nine out of 385 applications. We scored really high because we have a great uh, success record and a track record, and we do, um, the committee does a great job of doing due diligence and reporting, and the USDA just established a really good relationship with them over the years. And then in 2017, we received an additional 500000 So currently, we have about a little over $4 million in our revolving loan fund that has been lent out and revolved back in. So in addition to that, we do get partnership dollars, um, not in addition to, I'm sorry, it should be clear, we cannot use, so our operating funds come from contribution dollars that we receive through the city uh, and through the county. And so when you see our leverage funds there, um, we do leverage our dollars, our contribution dollars to get additional grant dollars to help us do the programming that we want to do in-house. And so those grant dollars come anywhere from the USDA to our utility bar partners through the Community Foundation. And we've been able to leverage those funds for an additional 258000 in grant dollars. And then we also use those funds, uh, our contribution dollars, which is our operating dollars, to um, get the USDA loan. So we've been able to get loans um, only $1,500,000 through those funds. So it's really important to have those partnership dollars. And just kind of want to show that we are really aware of how, and to let you know how important those funds are to us, because we operate on a budget of about approximately 150000 a year. So we do try and leverage those funds to do more programming here locally. Then in addition to the revolving loan fund, we have um, committees, our Ryan County Tourism Committee. We do have representation from uh, Sheldon with Chantel Ostra. And Dan Klein has recently joined us uh, from Sheldon as well. He works out at NCC, and he's been a great addition to the committee. And we're working really hard uh, to promote our sites and attractions in O'Brien County when we're trying to re recruit people to the area. Uh, frequently what we hear is, what is there to do? Um, they're looking at the quality of life. So we're really trying to work and promote those uh, attractions. We have... a. Uh, I guess build a website. We are currently trying to get information on the website. And some of that information would include like day trip itineraries, so people coming to the area looking for things to do, they will be able to access that on, on the website. Some of the actions.
action steps for the committee included uh, developing that website, uh, developing those uh, day trip itineraries. And, and one thing I'd like to talk about is our tourism champions. Um, really, all that is using uh, doing is using uh, our social media, such as Facebook and Instagram, and uh, the tourism committee every day. Uh, we have somebody who's posting, and um, we're just really trying to generate traffic and awareness to what we do by just using those free resources, posting, and then having other people share that information, and that's been working really well for us. And then finally, we have the Value Added Aid Steering Committee. I'd like to say this is the longest-serving committee we've had uh, with the corporation. Uh, it's a group of agribusinessmen uh, and women who are working um, to kind of help uh, with the agribusiness that we have, our dairies, our, when we have the ethanol plant, you know, those kind of businesses that come to us, these are the experts that we turn to to kind of help uh, assist us in those, those recruitment efforts. So uh, one of the action steps that we were working on currently right now is the farm ownership succession and estate planning. We were looking to host an event in August. Um, currently, we don't know if that will be postponed or not, so uh, we'll have to keep you uh, uh, up to date on that. So really, I'd like to say, you know, we appreciate Sheldon's partnership. It's been really good. I've, I've really enjoyed working with uh, Kurt and Chantel and uh, Sam, and um, really hope we can continue to work together and do great things for O'Brien County. Thank you. Thank you, Kiana. Are there any Welcome. Are there any questions for Kiana at this time? Canada, this is Pete Hamill. Uh, you mentioned uh, tourism. Is that a Facebook uh, page that you do your advertising on? So we have an Instagram account. It's called Tour O'Brien County. And we also have a Facebook uh, page called Tour O'Brien County. So, um, yeah, go search us, find us, follow us. We'd really appreciate it. Share the information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor, this is Kurt. I just wanted to thank Kiana as well. I certainly appreciate her collaboration and partnership that she has with us in Northwest Iowa Development. And it's always good to have a um, extra mind in the room. And she's she's a, she's great at it. And I uh, just want to say thank you to Kiana as well. Thank you, Kurt. Anyone else want to have anything for Kiana? Oh, this is Tom. I just wanted to thank you as well, Kiana. I just <clears throat> think that uh, this organization is such an important resource for North Coast Iowa, especially O'Brien County and for Sheldon. And uh, it's not only a, a vibrant uh, resource, but a very well-managed one. So I think. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Kiana, for your report. Uh, and again, those I echo the sentiments that have been expressed. So, with that, thank you, everyone. You bet. With that, Sam, we're ready to move on to. So you're up next. I am. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a item at the end. If if uh, you'd so allow, I'd like to. I yield to Jared Johnson to give us an update from his perspective. Uh, I first have just a few things. Uh, today would have been the first day of the ability to buy a flag for cleanup day. We we're hoping to break uh, the all-time record from last year. We we're hoping to break it this year. And we've had really good participation in cleanup day. Obviously, with the events going on, it makes sense to delay it. Uh, we, we don't want to cancel it. Our uh, we, but we aren't ready to lay out a new schedule until things settle down. So that's where we're at with that. We'd like to remind people that we are now picking up. We're having uh, Ertlers uh, pick up the uh, recycling container by the library twice a week. We encourage people to use that. And then uh, we will have a cleanup day or cleanup week, and we'll schedule that later. 
second issue I want to bring to your attention, and some of you may have seen my Facebook post that I posted on the city's page earlier today. Uh, we had a situation yesterday where uh, where we had uh, a number of, uh, of kids congregated. We aren't exactly sure how many, um, but they uh, it appeared to be over the number of 10. Uh, created a bit of an issue because we had someone uh, express their concern on it. Uh, Chief Dykstra uh, asked, the, asked the kids to um, you know, set a positive example. Nobody was written up, but um, we're running into, we did have somebody contact me this morning and ask us to consider shutting down the park. Um, I'm really not prepared. Um, I look for guidance from you, but I'm really not prepared to do that at this time. It's a very difficult process to shut down the parks when they're so um, they're so porous. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing to just shut something like that down. And uh, exercise is really important, and the weather is getting nicer. So we are asking people to please police themselves um, and uh, to congregate in, in groups of, of less than 10, six feet apart. Uh, Jared can, can jump in and help me with this one, but I just wanted to mention our concern there. Our, uh, really, from a resource standpoint, it becomes very difficult for us to try to police this. We typically only have, um, have you know, two police officers on duty at a time. Uh, it becomes a, a real resource uh, uh, strain. Uh, before I yield the floor to, to Jared, I'd like to also mention that this is the test drive of a new uh, process for our agendas. Uh, hopefully it's worked well for everybody, and uh, maybe if we could uh, get some feedback on that, um, that would be good. But we're, we've got three, uh, three free months uh, of this, and so far it seems like it's working pretty well. Then, do you want those comments now or when we go to council comments? Uh, council comments would probably be better. Okay. So, gentlemen, you're prepared now. You can give your comments when we get to that point. Jared, then, and hear from him. Sounds good. All right. Welcome, Jared. Jared, are you with us? A little soft. All right. Hey. All right. Uh, Hold on, Jared. It's really hard to hear you. I can hear you're there, but it's going to be hard to understand. Just hold on. To it. We're going to work to see if we can. All right. Try it again once now. All right. Can you guys hear me now? That's better. Okay. Very good. Hi, Richmond Agency. Um, thanks for giving me some time to talk this afternoon. Um, over the last 24 hours, there's been a, a lot of activity within O'Brien County. As you, we've had two confirmed cases uh, to this point. Uh, our first case was yesterday. Um, our second case uh, was today. Uh, right now, our plan is to continue to issue confirmed cases. Um, so we'll issue those out if, if additional cases cases arise. Um, what our process is right now is local public health will be working with the individuals that were confirmed with COVID individuals to do follow up and see how they are doing. Uh, so that's our that's our plan for follow up. Um, over the last week, we've been doing a lot of prep work for additional personal protective equipment resources. Uh, today, we acquired additional personal protective equipment from the state strategic national stockpile. Uh, right now, we're in the process of submitting an additional mission task. We're called mission task, additional PPE, and then we're also looking at a variety of different vendors um, to acquire additional personal protective equipment. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, yeah, there's been a lot of work all over the world uh, with this event. We, there's some PPE shortages, um, so we're 
we're open to hear of, you know, do you know of any additional vendors that may be willing to sell personal protective equipment, um, those resources as well. Um, yeah, right now we're kind of just taking it day by day, where things go. Um, the emails, I apologize, there's been a lot of emails going out. Um, I heard we're all informed of what's going on. Um, do you guys have any questions for me at this point? Uh, Jared, Sean Brewster. The uh, places like that, has anywhere else in the county, state, have they been closing any of those sort of public areas? Uh, good question. I actually participated in a statewide conference call this morning with Homeland Security and the other EMA throughout the state. Uh, the question came up about parks, which uh, so far we've only seen guidance for state parks. Um, DNR issued some guidance for what they are going to be doing. Um, what we requested this morning was additional guidance for our county parks, city parks, private parks. I haven't received that guidance yet, but when I do receive it, I can uh, forward that over uh, as well. Um, right now, I know like the county parks on Bryan County are closed um, up to, um, I apologize, I don't know the, the date at this point in time, but um, I haven't talked with Terry, but conservation to see if they will be extending that. Um, but that it is something that a lot of other counties are and cities are evaluating. Any other questions? Uh, you question? Tom Baker, you speak to me? Yes. Jared, how, how are you interfacing at the state level in regards to uh, the day to day um, requirements that you're seeing and reporting? Sure. So I have access to, it's called Web EOC. It's a, it's a state website kind of monitored by Homeland Security, but it's also, uh, it's also used by other state agencies. Within our Web EOC account, they have a state situation log or like a state event log. And we can see, it's kind of like a, it's an email that we can use to see updates. And as state agencies, have updates that they want to share with local EMA coordinators, they can post information into WebEOC uh, and we can download PDFs and other documents from that. So that's something that I check probably four or five times throughout the day to see if there's updates. And then I also use WebEOC to enter in uh, what's called a mission tab. It's also, and that's what our resource request would be. So I can see the status of that resource request and I can also see what they are able to provide us at this point in time. And then once they deliver the items, we can see the status that has been delivered. Thank you. Jared, Wayne Barahona here. Um, do you have any uh, numbers regarding the number of tests in O'Brien County that have been administered? I, I don't personally know. It might be something that the hospital, I don't know if the hospital would how many tests they've done, um, but I, I, I can't see on my end how many tests they've done. Jared, did, uh, at our yes, Jared, this is Mayor Gales. Um, at our task force meeting on Monday, it was one of the participants said that th this could. They're projecting this could the peak of this could stretch out to June first. If I remember correctly. Uh, and so I'm just wondering if you have anything, heard anything that confirms that, uh, do you see, where, where do you see this going? Uh, good question. I, like IDPH released this week, you know, there was an estimated two to three week time period where we would possibly see the peak. Uh, states around us have indicated potentially another eight weeks until we see the peak. Um, a lot of, a lot of the, the, Models I've seen so far extend through, you know, possibly May. So um, a lot of the stuff I've seen eventually work maybe eight weeks out to so see that peak, but it's all estimation. It could, it could be less than that, um, or it could be more. Uh, uh, we hope for we hope that it will peak soon, and that people will will take precautions, and we won't see the estimations that they're expecting. And I guess where I'm leading up to this is, 
I think that, to me, kind of heightens the importance of people taking this seriously in terms of the social distancing, the washing of hands, the cleaning of areas that are in high use. Uh, by doing that, would that shorten up that that time span? That's what we're hoping. Um, that, they indicated that a little bit today in the government press conference. Um, some of the models that have come out um, from the national leaders have shown, you know, that uh, you know they're expecting it, 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 it to get much worse. Um, but some of those models don't take into play the measures that I was taking and measures that we're taking locally. Help get information out about social distancing, washing your hands staying home with ill. Um, our goal is to try to make prevention a priority. And I uh, appreciate everything that you guys are doing to help get information out to the public, to keep that information going so people stay informed. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Jared from anybody? We just appreciate your work, Jared. Thank you. All right, yes, thank you, Jared. Uh, we're gonna move on then. Uh, this is our time for mayor and council comments. We'll start with council. I'm gonna call on you individually since it's kind of hard to know who's gonna speak next. I'm gonna ask Sean, do you have any comments? Uh, as far as the new format, I'm actually liking it because it makes it easier for me to find what I'm looking for. So in that regard, if, Sam, I appreciate this format and then I wanted to piggyback on Sam because I actually was also contacted last night and was told there was about 20 kids playing basketball at the park um, the other thing would be going to the uh, grocery store the last time I was there I seen about four or five families the whole family was there if you can just send one person the less people we send out, the better off we should be. Okay. Wayne, I'll go and move to you next. I have nothing to comment. All right. Brad, do you have anything you would like to comment on? Um, I like the new format, and the other thing is I've heard a lot of positive comments about the uh, street sweeper being out and getting the streets clean, so we appreciate the employees that put in extra time for that. Okay. Tom, okay. anything anything from you, Tom? Yeah, uh, in regards to the format, I think it's a home run on that. So I would be supportive of the program. Uh, in addition, I do want to make a statement, I think. Certainly. And uh, I, I think my statement will... Uh, will be shared by the council, but we want to lift up our uh, city staff and personnel, our emergency and community volunteers, our health care providers, business owners, employees, and all families as we together strive to minimize the effect of the COVID-19 virus outbreak. All of us in city government appreciate the responsible actions being demonstrated across our community relates to social distancing and the personal sacrifice being made. So we just want to say thank you. All right. Thank you, Tom. All I have there. Thank you. Uh, Pete, we'll move on to you if you have anything. Uh, no, I like the new format uh, as it's laid out also, but uh, other than that, I no. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Micah, is there anything you want to share? Are you still with us, Micah? I am. Nothing to share at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Right. Kurt, anything else you want to add? I have nothing to share either. Okay. Todd, anything from you? He's shaking his head no. Um, I think that's all. I have just a couple of comments, uh, the one being 
Thank you for those of you that are taking this whole response to the COVID virus seriously. And it's, we're, it's not going to be over just in a week or two. Be prepared. Continue to do what you can to stop the spread. Keep that curve lower. Lower the curve is the phrase we've been using in our, in our uh, task force meetings. Uh, that's all I can say about that at this point. Um, there are a couple of openings. We had a resignation from our park and rec board. So there is an opening for that. Uh, anybody in the uh, community that would be interested in serving on that committee, please contact either Sam or myself. And there is also an opening on the Planning Commission. Uh, if you need to know more about that or are interested in that and serving on that committee, again, contact Sam or myself for that information. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. Roll call, please. Yes. Hint. Brad, motion to adjourn. He must, he must have lost him. Uh, Tom, are you there yet? Yeah. Okay. Brad. Eggers? Aye. Aye. All right. There. All right. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Stay safe.